Hello everyone, uh, it's Mr. Mahmood here and today we're going to look at some uh, questions from the AQA 2019 November paper. So I chose just a few questions, the questions I thought can be a little confusing to people. I chose some couple of easy ones as well where you can pick up easy marks but not that quite easy. Um, sorry about the delay, I was going to upload it earlier on, but I'm having to record this uh, late at night. You can probably hear my son at the background crying away. But anyway, some of you asked me whether I will do a video on paper 2, and this is a very short one. But I hope I will do a paper 3 calculator, a big video on calculator topics revision for paper 3. Okay, so let's get started. Now, on 29, we have fifth term of a linear sequence is 17, and the sixth term of the sequence is 21. Work out the hundredth term of the sequence. So we have fifth term is 17, and the sixth term is 21. So that's the fifth term, and that's the sixth term. Now, to find the end, because we're finding the hundredth term, the easiest way to find this answer will be to find the n term first. So let's find the n term and the way we find the n term is by finding a difference between the two terms. So adding 4, so it's going up by 4. So we know the first part of the answer will be 4n. Now we need to find the second part of the answer. So let's replace n, this n with 5 and 4 times 5, so that gives us 4 times 5 which is 20. Now on the fifth term we've got 17, so what do I need to do to 20 to get to 17? Because I used n as 5, so I'm using fifth term for this n term. So 20 take away 3 gives us 17. So our final answer will be, well, the n term will be 4n minus 3, because I had to subtract 3 to get to the term number. Now 4 in minus 3, now I want to find out what the 100th term is. So in this case we're saying n equals 100, so replace n with 100. So 4 times 100 minus 3, that gives us 400 minus 3, which is 397. And that's the answer. By the way, if these videos are helping you, please do hit the like button and when you hit the like button it does motivate me at least gives me an indication that these videos are helping you okay and uh, next we have a scatter graph a very common question on a calculator paper if you didn't get that question in paper one most likely they will be on paper two or three okay now the scatter graph shows the best high jump and the best long jump for 15 boys and we've got the scatter graph right under the type of correlation shown. So we can clearly see the trend is upwards. So we can say it is positive correlation. So the correlation is positive. Sorry, Baba, what's wrong? I want to get Sharky. Yeah, you will get Sharky. Sharky is downstairs. Go and get it. Come on. Thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, Sharky. But anyway, we were with Liam before. Uh, Liam has a best uh, has a best high jump of 166 centimeters. Use the line of best fit to estimate his best long jump. So line of best fit. So first of all, let's go ahead and draw the line of best fit. So you will need to use a ruler. I've got a ruler here. Okay, so draw the line of best fit. Okay, so once we draw the drawn the line of best fit, let's put the ruler aside, and it's asking us to find uh, Liam has the best high jump of one hundred and sixty six centimeters. Okay, so best fit, estimate his best long jump. So go to one hundred and sixty six centimeters, so high jump, and we're going to draw a line at one hundred and sixty six centimeters. Okay, so let's draw this line and we're going to go across to find the long jump height. 
Okay, and we can see it's around about 532. Okay, with this type of question, you get some plus and minus. So if you're like two over or two less, sometimes one over one less, depending on the mark scheme, you will get the mark. Another boy has the best high jump of 195 centimeters. To give a reason why you should not use a line of best fit to estimate his long, his best long jump. Okay, so another boy has a best high jump of 195 centimeters. What is his long jump? So what would the estimate be? Now we can see when we go to 195, there are no values available here. So therefore, it is out of the range. So we cannot. Uh, estimate that okay so that will be your reason next we have a bearing question uh, J and K are ships P is a port uh, J is due south of P angle JPK is 56 JP is equal to KP work out the bearing of J from K when you get a bearing question always look out for where is it from from K so we're going to start here if it says K from J then you're going to start from here okay now we have an isosceles triangle so these two lines are indicating that this is an isosceles triangle so we know these two angles the base angles will be the same so what we need to do is 180 take away 56 is a calculator paper so use a calculator so I'll do the working here 180 take away 56 and that gives me an answer of 180 take away 56 124 degrees now because there are two angles we're going to divide it by 2 to find the base angle so which is 62 and 62 degrees now we are finding the bearing J from K which is this side here now in order to do that some people will measure it with a protractor but don't do that because it says not drawn accurately so you have to use calculation to find it now we found this 62 and the whole thing we know is 360 degrees so we need to take away the 62 and this little angle here now we need to find what this angle is now if you look carefully we have the north line and we have PJ this line here these two lines are parallel and because it's parallel we have the transversal going through it touching the two lines and this angle 56 and this angle will be equal because they both are alternate angles okay so this is 56 that means this angle is 56 as well okay so to find this angle we can take away 56 and 62 from 360 so let's do this working. So 360 take away 56 take away 62. So 360 take away 56 take away 62. That gives us an answer of 242 degrees. 242 degrees and that's our answer. Always write your answer, final answer on the dotted line. So that was the bearing question. Uh, this one another tricky question so here is an identity so basically means the left side is equal to the right hand side and work out the values of a and b so let's expand the brackets first so 3a x minus 10 a is equal to 21 x plus 2 b fireworks are going now again setting off outside uh, so what we can say because the identity we can say 3ax is equal to 21x so let's find say 3ax equal to 21x or in order to write the equation what we can say 3ax minus 21x is equal to 0 so we can add 21x on both sides now once you have this equation what we can see is we can divide both sides by x so the x and x cancel out so we're left with 3a is equal to 21. So divide by 3 both sides, that gives us a is equal to 7. Now we found a, now we need to find b, so a is 7. To find b, what we can say is minus 10a is equal to 
to b. Okay, or if we were to form an equation using these two terms, we could have said minus 10a, or 10a equals minus 2b, or minus 10a minus 2b is equal to 0, and then you add 2b on both sides, that gives us minus 10a equals 2b. Now what we know is a is 7 already we found, so we can replace a with 7, so minus 10 times 7 is equal to 2b. So that gives us minus 70 equals 2b. Now divide b by 2 both sides, that will give us b. So that will give us minus 35 is equal to b. So b equals minus 35, and we found a and b. So this was worth 3 marks. So that's done. So these questions can be very confusing. And uh, next we have a compound measures question. A car journey is in two stages. A car travels 110 miles in two hours. A car travels 44 miles at the same average speed as stage one. Work at this time for stage two. Give your answer in minutes. Okay, so let's work out the speed first for stage one because we got the distance and hours. A good way to remember the formula is triangles, distance, speed, and time. No, it's not. You spot the mistake. Well done. It's speed at the bottom, distance over the top, and then time at the bottom here. So if you remember distance at the top, you know the, the rest of the two are at the bottom. So speed equals distance divided by time, so distance is 110, so speed will be 110 divided by 2, that gives us 55 miles per hour. Now the car travels at 44 miles, and the stage 2 the car travels at 44 miles at the same average speed as stage 1, so the speed is 55 for stage 2 and distance is 44, work out the time. So time is equal to, look at the formula now, so distance at the top, speed at the bottom. So distance is 44 and speed at the bottom which is 55 because the speed is the same as stage 1. And then 44 divided by 55 gives us 4 fifths or 0 0.8. We work with decimal because it's a calculator question. Keep things easier with decimal. Now, work at the time for stage two. We worked at the time, 0 0.8 hours, because the speed was in miles per hour, so that's 0 0.8 hours. But it's asking us to give your answer in minutes. There's a little catch there. Okay, so because it's 0 0.8 hours, so 0 0.8 hours, and one hour is 60 minutes, and if you just times it by 0 0.8, that will give you 0 0.8 of an hour, 0, 10 eighths of an hour. In other words, so 60 times by 0 0.8, which is 48. 48 minutes, so the final answer is 48 minutes. So that was a compound measure. If you didn't get one of these questions in paper one, they usually come up, even if, even if you got one in paper one. Okay, very popular question. Uh, these are very common questions, the lowest common multiple. Uh, usually non-calculator, but they could give you one with two marks. Now, if you watched my calculator hacks video, I showed a really quick way to find the product of prime factors of numbers. It doesn't matter how big the numbers are. Now, because they're two big numbers, I wouldn't ask you to waste your time doing the factor tree. If you're comfortable with it, obviously go ahead, but use the calculator, it will save you lots of times, trust me, you can use that time to do something else. So what we're going to do is find the product of prime factors of 120, so what you need to do is press, type in 120 in your calculator, by the way it's on the calculator hacks video as well, uh, press equal sign, press shift and press the fact button, you can see like the four little dots and on the top it says in yellow fact, if you've got a Casio calculator. And that gives us the product of prime factors as 2 cubed times by 3 times by 5. Okay, and the next one, 144, do the same thing again. 144, press equal. 
So type in 144, press equal, then press shift and the fact button, and that will give you the product of prime factors. So that gives us 2 to the power of 4 times by 3 squared. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're finding colours called multiple. We can do a Venn diagram. Okay, so that's, so let's say this is 420 and this is 444. So 120, 144, we got 2 cubed and 2 to the power of 4. That means we have uh, 3 lots of 2 common. Yeah, so 1, 2, 3. Let's zoom in a little bit. Then we have 3, so uh, 1 extra 2 remaining for the 144. They write it in on the side of 244. 3 and 3 squared, 1 lot of 3 common, and 144 has 1 extra 3, and 120 has 1 extra 5, right here on the side of 120. Now the lowest common multiple is going to be, you multiply every single number. Now just in case it asks you to work out the highest common factor, you're going to multiply just these numbers in the middle. And for lowest common multiple, you're going to multiply every single number inside the Venn diagram. So 5 times 2 times 2 times 2 3 times 2 times 3. Okay, it's a calculator question, so do use a calculator. So just double check how you've got the right number of 5s and 2s. You don't want to mess out. Very well, make the mistake. 5, one of them, 1, 2, 3, 4 of them, 1, 2, 3, 4 of the 2s and 2 3s. Yeah, that's fine. So 5 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 3. So 1, 1, 2, 3, one, two, yeah, good, I've got the right number, 720. So 720. Okay, so that was the last question, and they are all from AQA 2019. November paper. Sorry about the delay guys. I was hoping to do this video earlier on due to some family commitments and a few other things to get come around to do it. So please do consider subscribing. Let your friends know. If they don't know about this video, please do share it with them. Help them. I like helping people. So I'd expect my followers to help other people as well. And also, um, don't hit, forget to hit the like button to let me know how you found this video. And if anyone can, let me know the topics that come up in paper two. And if you can let me know the topics in paper one in the comments or anywhere in this video or my any other videos, that would be really helpful so that I can plan the paper three revision video. Okay. Mr. Mahmood, I... By the way, good luck with your exam tomorrow. Mr. Mahmood, helping you do better in maths.